In the previous uh, videos I already talked a bit about some models being more Bayesian than others and I realized that I haven't really explained what I mean with things being Bayesian. Essentially uh, a, a modeling approach is, is considered Bayesian if it relies on a consistent application of the sum and product rules of probability. And we want to work in a Bayesian setting because this allows us to deal with uncertainties uh, on, at all levels of, of my uh, modeling uh, task. Uh, for example, we saw that in the maximum likelihood and maximum posterior approach, we already uh, dealt with uncertainty on my target values by working with predictive distributions. Now in the maximum posterior case, we also assumed a prior on my model, parameter, on my model parameters. So that actually already give us some uncertainty over my model choices. Mm -hmm. But in both cases, we made a point estimate for, for the most probable uh, model. And we worked with this set of parameters in our predictive distributions. Now in our Bayesian approach, we do not dare to make one of such uh, decisions on the models. But we want to also incorporate uh, these um, uncertainties on uh, the model parameters in our predictions. Uh, we'll see in a minute how we do this. Uh, but this essentially leads to a fully Bayesian approach to prediction. Okay, so the setting is again, we have a data set of observations, of independent observations, and we want to model uh, this data set with some probability distribution as to be able to make predictions for the future. So um, this data set could consist of input, uh, of just input points, but maybe also target values, uh, corresponding target values. And then our goal was to, um, in, in the future, we want to make predictions. So uh, let's say we, have, we are given some input X and we want to predict now for this new data point, what would be the corresponding uh, data point? And we define these probabilities for each of these uh, targets. And such a predictive distribution was parameterized by a set of weights uh, W and maybe some precision parameter beta. Then we discussed two approaches for finding these optimal estimates for W. One was the maximum likelihood approach in which we selected the model parameters W which maximized the likelihood of the data well, being explained by this particular model. In the, the map case, we instead maximized the model parameters. So the, we chose the parameters that maximized the probability of these weights um, given my, my data. And these two approaches are considered frequentist approaches because I discard any uncertainty uh, regarding W. I just pick one of the most optimal choices for W. So I just make a point estimate for my model parameter W. Now in a Bayesian approach, we want to include this uncertainty over my model parameters. Um, so we have a given prior belief over W. So this uh, prior distribution P of W and we have a data and we are really interested in actually working with this posterior distribution not just for selecting one particular model we want to use this and this posterior distribution was derived from a uh, Bayes theorem so we could obtain it from uh, the likelihood so the likelihood of my data being explained by this model um, times the prior uh, belief of this uh, model divided by uh, the data evidence. And this data evidence is essentially the, the probability of my data regardless of my, my model parameters. And it could be obtained, it's considered maybe a normalizing constant, and it actually could be obtained from uh, the terms in the numerator. Okay, now this is important to, to remember. Uh, the, the, the posterior distribution, so the posterior distribution reflects the plausibility of different W given uh, my prior knowledge and the data. Um, so basically this means that some models are more plausible than others. Now recall that um, uh, we work with this prior distribution which represents some prior belief or prior knowledge of the plausibility of W. And in the previous video we actually worked with Gaussian distribution um, in which we assumed that my uh, weights were uh, had small values, they were close to zero, and I could control the amount of variation of these uh, weights with some extra variance parameter uh, alpha it was in the previous video. And then we could update our uh, belief in this 
uh, model parameter w uh, given my data observations and we could do so using Bayes theorem right so the posterior was given uh, via the product of the likelihood with the prior normalized um, with this evidence now the objective in this Bayesian approach is to in incorporate this uh, posterior uh, probabilities for my uh, different model parameters as and and actually we want to come up with a predictive distribution which does not depend on W. So we do not dare to make a particular choice for W. We want to include all well, possible options. And we could actually achieve this via a marginalization process. So recall from uh, the sum rule of probability theory that such um, a distribution which only depends on, well, now one of those random variables could be obtained by integrating out the other one. So we could think of this as a marginalization of the joint probability of X and W given my data. And then we know from uh, the product rule of probability that such a uh, joint distribution can be obtained from a product of two uh, distributions uh, as follows. So we have this joint probability could be obtained as the probability of a particular X given all my data and given my uh, model parameters times the probability of my model parameters conditioned on the data dw. So this is the product rule of probability. And here I should note that actually this is a very odd thing to write. So we see this d over here. So x is apparently conditioned on d, but it isn't because we made this assumption that each data point was independent from one another. So also a new observed or a new uh, data point x prime uh, the should not depend on my data set D. So actually, I don't think I should write this. I should write this. I should write this as follows, namely the integral over the probability of X given my model parameters weighted with my posterior probability. And so basically this says that my predictive distribution, which in the end does not, does not depend on W anymore, is given by a weighted sum or a weighted average of all my um, predictive distribution. So this is one predictive distribution for a particular choice of W, and I'm going to weigh it with its corresponding uh, posterior probability of, well, this thing quantified how plausible my, my model was for these uh, W parameters. Okay, so predictive distributions can be obtained via marginalization process over W of these joint probability distributions. And now there's a small but important remark that I would like to make, and that is that even though our data set is conditionally independent on the model parameter, this does not imply that the marginal distributions are also independent. And, and I'm going to quickly show that uh, as follows. So we have this uh, conditionally, conditional independence means this. It means that all my data points, um, they are uh, independent from one another, uh, given my, my model parameters. So I could factorize this joint probability distribution of all these xi's into the product of each of these individual uh, distributions. And my data was uh, identically distributed, so it was using the same uh, probability distribution for each of these uh, data points. So here on the left hand side, we see this um, marginalized probability distribution on the data. So for example, a predictive distribution, it was obtained via this marginalization over the joint distribution of the data and the model parameters. And using the product rule of probability, we could factorize this joint probability into uh, the product of a likely likelihood and a prior. So let's just write it out. So here I'm doing the marginalization. So I'm integrating over all these W's uh, this joint distribution, joint likelihood factorizes into the product of all these individual probabilities. So I have the probability of x1 given my model parameters times p of x2 conditioned on my model parameters, etc. x3, oh, sorry, xn times the prior. And this integrated for all uh, values of uh, the model parameters. Now, if the resulting distribution um, would be a, a, an independent distribution, so that would mean that each of these 
uh, yeah, per, so so we could split this joint, this resulting marginal distribution into these product of uh, well individual marginalizations. We can show that this is not going to be the same. So let's check this. Suppose my marginal would factorize into e each of these uh, sub marginals. That would mean that I'm going to take the product, the product of each of these probability distributions, where each of these probability distributions could also have been obtained via this marginalization process. Now each x1 or x xi, so let's start with x1, is conditioned on a set of model parameters. So this is the likelihood for x1 given model parameter w1 times um, the prior, and this integrated. Uh, we do the same now for the next item. Okay, so this is going to be a product of all these individual uh, marginals. Now we see, because we take all these I integrations, uh, we integrate over some W, so these W's are not the same. It's, it's an integration uh, parameter, let's call it the dummy parameter. But the point here is that each of these marginals is obtained via uh, these conditionals, which each have their own priors, each have their own uh, priors and, and corresponding weights. Whereas in our original uh, case, the marginalization over the condi conditionally independent distribution, here each um, likelihood has the same set of, of weights and the same prior. So we see that generally um, this will not be the same because if indeed this marginal distribution would factorize in such a way, yeah, then we should be able to show uh, how to write this into this form. And we cannot do this in the gen generic case. Uh, maybe we could indeed assume independence of each of these uh, model parameters that would lead to a factorization of all these. Okay, that's something we we actually do uh, in, the, in the map case, for example, in the video uh, previous video. But then it would also mean that each of these terms uh, correspond to each other. So that x1 only depends, the probability for x1 only depends on one particular parameter w1. And I suppose we can immediately tell that this is not going to happen in the general case because now if we parameterize this with a Gaussian, let's say with only two parameters, um, yeah, I have a mean and a standard deviation and I have n data points. So uh, this will never happen. Okay, so important to remember, marginalizing over conditionally independent distribution will generally or most likely not result in a independent distribution, in an independent marginal distribution. Okay, now let's continue with uh, how such a Bayesian approach works in practice. So we consider again uh, curve fitting. So we have input output pairs and all these inputs are stacked into one vector and all the targets or all the outputs are also stacked in one vector. And uh, we know that the posterior distribution uh, of my model parameters given my, my data could be obtained by multiplying the likelihood. So the likelihood of a target given well, the corresponding inputs and my model parameters. Um, so we multiply the likelihood with the prior and we normalize over our uh, data evidence. Where uh, this is really considered a normalizing uh, constant, which could be obtained by integrating over uh, the things that we see in, in the numerator. Then we're going to use this uh, posterior distribution um, uh, in our predictive distribution. So uh, we will not make a specific choice for a particular W. So in the map maximum a posteriori case, we were selecting the W that optimized this thing, that maximized the probability distribution given my data. But now I'm going to use a marginalization process. So I basically I'm going to consider all possible uh, models weighted with their probability, uh, weighted with their probabilities. So that's what you see over here. So we have a disjoint probability of the targets and my model parameters, and then giving uh, my data set and the input point, which I'm going to test for. So using the product rule of probability, we can show um, that this thing, so this integral, we're actually integrating over the product of, of two, two items, namely the predictive distribution. So, um, Let's try it out. So we're going to predict t given my 
x, so that's what I'm sampling or what I'm testing for, and then given my data and the model parameters times the posterior for the model parameters. And now I want to stress again that we're working with independent data samples. So my t prime, of course, it depends on the corresponding x prime, but it will not depend on the other data samples. So this uh, conditional uh, dependency here does not exist. And we therefore shouldn't write it. So I'm going to write it out. So actually we have the integral of my predictive distribution for a given x and given my model parameters times the posterior on W given the entire data set. Okay, so what we see is that in this Bayesian approach, we will take uncertainty with respect to the model parameters into account. Uh, this uncertainty is sort of reflected by this posterior distribution because I can have multiple models that are highly probable and some are not so probable. And what you do here uh, with this predictive distribution, with this marginalization, you say that you're doing Bayesian model averaging. So you take basically the average over all your predictive distribution over all your models and you weight each model with its, uh, with its probability. Okay, so that's summarized over here. My predictive distribution is obtained as a weighted average of each of these individual uh, probability distributions. Uh, and this relies a lot on the computation of a posterior. So we could obtain the posterior as the product of the likelihood times the prior and then normalized uh, via this uh, data evidence. And now this data evidence has to be computed via this full integral. So basically we, we normalize this term by integrating over all possible um, model parameters. And this gives me a normalizing uh, constant. Now, an advantage of this uh, Bayesian approach is that now we include prior knowledge. So prior knowledge on the model. And actually this is what we also did with the maximum posterior case, where we said, okay, I'm going to model this. I'm going to assume some prior knowledge on my model. Uh, so that's reflected with this prior distribution over here. But in that case, uh, it we optimized over uh, this posterior and selected just one of these W. So the most probable uh, model we selected and this defined our predictive distributions. Uh, but now in this fully Bayesian approach, we do this model averaging and therefore uh, this Bayesian approach re represents not just the uncertainty in T prime. So this was reflected from the fact that we were using predictive distributions. But now we also take uncertainty over W into account via this model averaging. Now a possible disadvantage of this approach is that uh, in the computation of this posterior, we actually have to compute uh, this evidence, so this, this integral. And especially this integral is often hard to compute analytically. And we like analytic fun functions because if we know uh, what this thing looks like, we can just evaluate it because we have an analytic description for it. If we do not have it, we have to numer numerically compute these integrals. And also that is often quite difficult. So uh, what people typically do, um, they, they either approximate this or numerically compute somehow uh, this integral. But there are ways to come up with analytic solutions to this. And we already uh, got a preview of that with uh, the map case where we assumed a prior, which was a Gaussian and also our likelihood was a Gaussian. And then the products of these Gaussians also give you a Gaussian. So when working with Gaussian distributions, it's actually, uh, you can, get a long way with uh, finding these analytic solutions. But the disadvantage of this is that actually you're picking your distributions for convenience. Essentially, you can say that uh, we pick a Gaussian because now we have a nice distribution to work with. And actually in most ways, it is actually well quite appropriate to model your data with Gaussians, uh, but it sort of implies also a bit that you're picking also the Gaussian before, well, uh, because of mathematical convenience rather than this is the most accurate model. Okay, but the great thing about Bayesian approaches is that uh, they take uncertainty into account both with respect to uh, the target uh, distributions to, with respect to the predictions and also with respect to the, the model parameters.